Hello students, welcome to the lecture on event evaluation and planning and after this lecture we will be able to learn the following objectives. Describe event planning, its concept and design, discuss the purpose of an event, analyze the needs of audience, explain the process of event planning, describe the event planning tips, understand venue selection and contracting event venue. Let's start with the introduction. An event is any activity that requires making arrangement before the program can actually take place. It may be anything from an introductory meeting or study break to a concert, film, conference, a dramatic performance. But keep in mind that no matter how small or easy an event may seem, some forethought is required. Event planning is a process of planning a festival, ceremony, competition, party or convention. Event planning includes budgeting, establishing dates and alternate dates, selecting and reserving the event site, acquiring permits and coordinating transportation and parking. Event planning also includes some or all of the following depending on the event. Developing a theme or motive for the event, arranging for speakers and alternate speakers, coordinating location support such as electricity and other utilities, Arranging decor, tables, chairs, tents, event supports and security, catering police, fire, portable toilets, parking, sign age, emergency, plans, healthcare, professionals and clean up. What is an event planner? From meetings to weddings, conferences to sporting competitions and expositions to political fundraisers, event planners are individuals or teams responsible for establishing dates, goals, objectives, themes, venues, staffing, marketing, decor, transportation, food and beverage, entertainment, and on-site logistics and management. As an event planner, you will work for a company, nonprofit, or government entity, or run your own event planning and management consulting firm. Whether you choose to specialize, focusing on meeting or wedding planning exclusively, for example, or provide services for a wide range of event types, you will need training, experience, and a comprehensive understanding of the art and science of bringing people together for a common purpose. The event management industry is highly competitive. In the United States, as of 2010, the seven billion dollar event management industry was comprised of about 3,500 companies, the top 50 of which grossed approximately 45 percent of the industry's revenues. However, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics indicates that the industry will grow 16 percent in the next decade and employ approximately 66,000 meeting and convention planners by 2018. By 2005, the wedding planning industry was about 15,000 people strong, although Bureau of Labor Statistics does not compile detailed stats about this industry sector, they do combine data on wedding and funeral professions and indicate steady growth there as well. Let us now discuss the concept and design. Events are a workplace for some and a leisure activity for others and range from family days in the local park to musical event, festivals, firework displays, carnivals, sporting events, etc. Negligence on the part of the owner of the premises and or the organizer of the event can result in injury to either workers or patrons. An event can be described as a public assembly for the purposes of celebration, education, marketing or reunion. Events can be classified on the basic of their size, type and context. An event can be social or life cycle events like birthday party, hand or stack party, graduation day, bachelor's party, engagement, wedding anniversary, retirement day, funeral, etc. Education and career events. Events like education fair, job fair, workshop, seminar, debate, contest, competition, etc. Sports events, events like Olympics, World Cup, marathons, Wimbledon, wrestling, matches, etc. Entertainment events, events like music concerts, fairs, festivals, fashion shows, award functions, celebrity nights, beauty pageants, flash mob, jewelry shows, stage shows, etc. Political events, events like political processions, demonstration, rally, political functions, etc. Corporate events, events like MICE, meeting, incentives, conferences and exhibition, product launches, roadshows and buyer seller meet, etc. Religious events, 
events like religious festivals or fairs, religious procession, Katha, Pravachan, Diwali fair, the Shera fair, etc. Fundraising or cost related events. Any event can be turned into a fundraising or cost related event, example auctions. The design of an event is many things. It is a cross branding so that potential attendees, exhibitors, and sponsors immediately recognize the event when they see the logo or branding design on the web, in print, in electronic mailings, etc. It is the design of the logo, website, print and electronic ads, save the date postcards, brochures and promotional materials utilized before and during the event. The design of event is also the utilization of audiovisual, gobos, signage, production, overall theme and decor, scenic elements, promotional giveaways and other items on site at the event. Event design is a branding roadmap of event from start to finish. Now moving on to the next topic, we will study the purpose of an event. Since the dawn of time, in one way or another, events have existed to mark an important occasion that is to happen. Celebrating the changing of seasons and phases of the moon are all events because it gathers people of a common interest to a specified place and a particular place. At present times, events have grown in popularity to such a scale that it is now a global industry. There are different types of events which include social life, even cycles, sporting, culture, business and fundraising. Events can be divided in terms of size and the impact they make on society economically and socially. These are called hallmark, mega and major events. A hallmark must earn its name. An event is considered to be so significant in the spirit or ethos of a city or region that it helps form an identity for that city and region. It also gains widespread recognition. A classic example is the carnival in Rio. It represents Latin vitality and the exuberance of the city. Social cycle events include birth dates, anniversaries and funerals. These events occur in accordance to the calendar. For example, a person's birthday can only be an event at a specific time of year. Sporting events are categorized into three types, which are mega events, calendar events, one-off events and showcase events. Business communication is communication used to promote a product, service, organization, relay information without the business or deal with legal and similar issues. Business communication encompasses a variety of topics including marketing, branding, customer relation, consumer behavior, advertising, public relation, media relation, corporate communication, community engagement, research and measurement, reputation management, interpersonal communication, employee engagement, online communication, event management, advertising is the most widely known weapon in the marketing armor. This is a paid medium involving radio, TV, poster sites, press or direct mail. Each medium offers several advantages and disadvantages. Advertising communication is business, the way account managers and creative talent work together in an advertising agency to create commercials and ads that help sell the client products to the target audience. On average, advertisements take approximately 60% of the printed space in American newspaper. In the same year, newspaper halt in about INR 4,500 lakh from subscription and single-use buyers. Let us now discuss about analysis of need of audience. Audience analysis involves identifying the audience and adapting a speech to their interests, level of understanding, attitudes and beliefs. Taking an audience-centered approach is important because the speaker's effectiveness will be improved if the presentation is created and delivered in an appropriate manner. Identifying the audience through extensive research is often difficult. So audience adaptation often relies on the healthy use of imagination. As with many valuable tools, audience analysis can be used to access. Adapting a speech to an audience is not the same thing as simply telling an audience what they want to hear. Audience analysis does not mean grand standing or no towing to a public. Rather, adaptation guides the stylistic and content choices a speaker makes for a presentation. Audience analysis can be your best friend. What is so great about audience analysis? If you do it, you can give a terrific speech. If you don't, your speech can be a disaster. To keep your speech from falling apart, 
it is a good idea to find out as much about the guests as you can before your speech. Not only will you have a better speech, but this will tell you what to expect and keep you from insulting or embarrassing anybody. To play it safe, ask these questions to the bride or groom. They should be able to answer or find out the answers for you. A word to the wise. Ask these questions well in advance of the wedding. As the wedding date approaches, things will get very hectic. Here are the recommended questions. 1. When will I speak? 2. How many guests will attend? 3. How long would you like me to speak? 4. Who should I thank for hosting the event? 4B. How should I address each person whom I will thank? 4C. How do I pronounce the names? 5. Is there anything in particular that I should say or do? 6. Is there anything in particular that I should not say or do? 7. If it applies, will there be any audiovisual equipment available? For use a friendly tool to help with your analysis, visit the audience analysis plan page. Factors in audience analysis Audience expectation when people become audience members in a speech situation, they bring with them expectation about the occasion, topic and speaker. Violating audience expectation can have a negative impact on the effectiveness of the speech. Imagine that a local politician is asked to speak at the memorial service for a beloved former mayor. The audience will expect the politician's speech to praise the life and career of the deceased. If the politician used the opportunity to discuss a piece of legislation, the audience would probably be offended and the speaker would lose credibility. Of course, there may be some situation when violating the audience expectation would be an effective strategy. Presenters that make political statements at the Academy Awards do so precisely because the message in congruity with the occasion increases the impact of the proclamation. Attitude toward topic. Knowing audience members' attitudes about the topic will help a speaker determine the best way to reach their goals. Imagine that a presenter is trying to convince the community to build a park. A speaker would probably be inclined to spend the majority of the speech giving reason why a park would benefit the community. Audience size. Many elements of speech making change in accordance with audience size. In general, the larger the audience, the more formal the presentation should be. Sitting down and using common language when speaking to a group of 10 people is often quite appropriate. However, that style of presentation would probably be inappropriate or ineffective if someone were speaking to 1,000 people. Large audiences often require that someone use a microphone and speak from an elevated platform. Demographics The demographic factors of an audience include age, gender, religion, ethnic background, class, sexual orientation, occupation, education, group membership and countless other categories. Since these categories often organize individuals' identities and experiences, a wise speaker attends to them. Politicians usually pay a great deal of attention to demographic factors when they are on the campaign trail. If a politician speaks in Day County, Florida, the country with the largest elderly population, they will likely discuss the issues that are more relevant to people in that age range. Medicare and Social Security. One key part of audience analysis is demographics, or as the I Speak book said, characteristics of people. This can be a person's economic status, um, their age, or even their own particular worldview. Demographics can be found in a number of ways. You could observe the audience, although if you're using these binoculars to observe the audience, you are probably too far away. You want to make sure that you're observing, um, not stalking. Stalking is never good. You could also interview members of the audience to see where they might be coming from. Overall, your goal should be to understand who you will be speaking to. Alright, so maybe you know all of this about demographics. Uh, you read the book very closely and you're ready to move on. Now you're saying, yeah, sure, but how can this help me create a more effective speech? Well, that's what I'm here for, to help you create a more effective speech, right? So let's start, let's pretend that you're a forensic science major. 
You are hugely interested in how scientists solve crimes and cannot wait to finish college to do this as a career. Because of this, you want to do your speech on forensic science. That seems to make sense, right? But stop right there. This topic is very broad, so maybe you should consider your audience to help you narrow it down a bit. Let's see. Uh, your friend Priscilla, who's a music major, spends most of her time playing cello. And then there's Joel, who is always helping you with your homework, but he's a business major and frankly he cares a, only a little bit about science. And you also know a few other classmates who are perplexed with your forensic science major. So let's rethink this a second. Hmm. So let's use the thinking man's help and let's really think about this issue. So maybe you shouldn't give every detail about forensic science. You don't have time for that anyways. You should definitely explain the basics, but how can you encourage the audience to care? Hmm. Well, a lot of your classmates say they use television to wind down after a long day. And Priscilla did mention that she watches crime shows and other students seemed at least familiar with them when she brought them up. But the problem with these crime shows is that they're not really a proper representation of forensic science. Ah. You can compare and contrast forensic science on TV to real life. This will allow you to talk about what you'd like, but also give the audience if they will want to hear more. Voluntariness. Audiences are either voluntary in which case they are genuinely interested in what a presenter has to say or involuntary in which case they are not inherently interested in the presentation. Knowing the difference will exist in establishing how hard a speaker needs to work to spark the interest of the audience. Involuntary audiences are notoriously hard to generate and maintain interest in a topic. Think about most people's attitude toward classes or mandatory meetings they would prefer to not attend. Tips for analyzing an audience. Define target audience. In most audiences, there will be a mix of opinions about any topic. There are usually some people who agree with the speaker claim, some people who are strongly opposed, others who are undecided and still others that are apathetic. Conventional wisdom maintains that a communicator does not need to focus on the people who already agree with them and the people who strongly disagree with them will probably not be persuaded by one speech. Research At times, a presenter may be able to learn about their audience by researching in the library or on the internet. This can be especially helpful when speaking to members of a distinct organization. Survey Conducting a survey is one way to find out about the values, beliefs, and knowledge of an audience. Surveys allow a speaker to gain specific information from a large number of people. With access to the audience before a speech, an orator may be able to give brief written surveys to all audience members. Surveys may include open-ended questions and closed-ended questions. Here are some tips for constructing a survey. Get the information someone needs in as few questions as possible. Keep questions short and focused. Choose the wording carefully and make questions concise. Avoid leading or loading questions. Interview. Learning about an audience by conducting interviews is the most helpful but usually most unrealistic way to understand an audience. Unlike surveys that can obtain information from many people in a short amount of time, interviews are much more time consuming. Interviewing all members of the audience is often impossible or unreasonable. A possible alternative is to converse with a representative sample of the audience. A representative sample is a small subset of the audience that maintains the demographic proportions of the whole audience. Whether they are planning to throw an annual diner and a dance, a fundraiser, a company picnic, a conference exhibition, celebration or convention, Event planning is not to be taken lightly. Company-wide events, no matter industry or sector, can be well worth the effort but require a great deal of planning and resources. Defining the objective. An objective is a goal. An objective should be smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time-bound. Objectives should match these criteria. Taking the lead. 
Maybe organization cannot or would not foot the bill for an event planner. Maybe someone would rather take the reins himself. At any rate, it is time to take the lead and begin planning event. But where to start? First of all, it is important to begin planning process early enough to allow sufficient time for the event to go smoothly. One of the most common mistakes made by a novice event organizer is the failure to allow enough time for effective event planning. Creating the agenda. Deciding how to allocate time during event is one of the most important elements of planning a good event. As someone plan, remind him of his events, objective and target participants so that someone can plan event to appeal to participants. Allocating time. As a someone allocate time, make sure that someone includes sufficient time for every stage of the event and that someone make time for meals and coffee and tea breaks. Also, if event requires participants to move from one venue to another, from say a sports field to a reception hall, make sure that someone allocates sufficient time for transit. Making the event budget. When someone is making a budget, look at the money someone will spend, expenses and the money someone may bring in, revenue. Someone should always cover expenses for event. If someone is planning a fundraiser, they should aim to make a profit. Expenses, venue, location. Does someone need to rent a space? How much will it cost? Are there any additional costs like insurance or wages for a receptionist? Are any of the costs recoverable, like a security deposit that is returned if nothing in the space is damaged during the event? Catering. It will someone provide food and drinks during the event? How much will they cost? Promotion. Someone wants to promote his event. Some options are flyers, posters, stickers, mailed invitation or announcement. Someone can also purchase time on the radio or on television or purchase a notice on a billboard or a banner. All of these things cost money, from making photocopies to hiring a radio ad. Another great way to promote even expense-free is in interviews on the radio and in the newspaper. Covering costs. There are a few different ways we can cover costs and most people use a combination of these methods. In-kind contribution, donation, contribution and grants, cut costs. Cover costs. Why do businesses give in-kind donation and embassies, foundation, Individuals and development agencies give grants. Many of them support costs and a contribution is a way for them to help someone and show their support. It is a good way for them to promote themselves as positive actors, their name in the community. Someone can receive assistance in the form of in-kind contribution, money and technical assistance. All three can be key elements to event. Raising funds for event, participation fees, for an event, one of the easiest ways to generate income is to charge an entry or attendance fee for participant. When deciding how much to charge, someone should take into account how much someone thinks people will realistically pay to attend. If someone makes a fee too high and few people attend, someone would not raise much money. The price of attendance at similar events. Promoting event. Reaching participant. What is one thing absolutely needed for a successful event? Participant. To get participants for event, we need to invite them. We should create marketing or outreach plan for bringing attendees event, allocate tasks among the organizing committee and get started. So now we will study about some tips for event planning. 5W that is why, what, when, where, who and 1H that is how. Principle is used to create an event plan. Why? Why means why someone want to organize the event. That is event objective what what means what someone is going to do in the event that is what will be the event name means what will be the name of the event when when someone is going to organize the event that is date and time where where someone is going to organize the event that is venue who who will be organizer sponsor partners clients and target audience how how exactly is someone going to market and produce the event Six tips for planning great corporate events. First, effectively communicate your content. It's the reason your guests attend. So it is important your message has value and is linked to your theme. Two, plan team building exercises. Create a sense of community and camaraderie. Icebreakers help everyone come together and be part of the event. Number three, 
careful selection of speakers. Bring your content alive. Present speakers that motivate, inspire, and educate. Number four, host breakout sessions. Golden nuggets of your content. Focus on specific topics that allow attendees to learn about their areas of interest. Number five, design audio video presentations. Enlighten and educate guests. These elements offer a unique way to communicate information effectively. Number six, plan custom corporate entertainment. Utilize a personalized presentation. Work with a corporate entertainer to design a program that not only relaxes and entertains, but also effectively reinforces your content. If you follow these six tips, you'll host a great corporate event. Let us now discuss about venue selection. Keep following things in mind while selecting a venue for event. Target, audience or guest size. This means the number of people someone is expecting to attend even. Make sure that venue can easily accommodate expected target audience. Venue should not be too small or too large for guests. If too small, then guests will feel discomfort. If it is too large, then someone will unnecessarily end up paying more for the venue. Target audience status. If someone target audience are rich people, then venue must be a five-star hotel or resort and all the services provided during the event must be of very high quality. Contracting the event venue. Contract. It is an agreement that is enforceable by law. Agreement. Agreement is a promise, a set of promises. Good day. My name is Peter Thomas and I run a business called Participlan, group facilitation, where we facilitate workshops for companies. And in a discussion with Riverside Estates, we tried to identify what it is the clients really need to have in place to run an effective planning or discussion in, in, in any aspect of their business. And we came up with some ideas where we said, really, Today we're in a communication age, people really do have to communicate, so let's look at what we would need, for example, if we were running a strategic planning session. And clearly, the first thing that we have to help clients achieve as a, as a destination is, what is the purpose or the objective of the meeting? What is the end result they're actually trying to achieve? Are we very comfortable that that's, uh, that's in place? Once we know what we're trying to achieve, the next question that has to be answered is who are the best people to contribute towards getting that end result that we're wanting to achieve? Now, unfortunately, because you're talking about people who can contribute most towards a decision, we're talking about people who have the wisdom and knowledge of what's happening in the industry in which that company plays, the type of, of, of dynamics that exist within the company, and because we're talking about people who have a great experience and knowledge, it is also highly likely that those people are going to be the most expensive people. So putting them into a meeting environment, you're talking about high opportunity cost. Uh, the cost of those people being out of the productive uh, environment now sitting in a meeting trying to get to some decisions or other. So what we need to be able to do, any venue or any destination where they're going to have that meeting, must be some place that stimulates the best thinking of that group. Must make them feel really excited about participating. Which means they have to feel that the pressure is taken off them from their day-to-day -day environment. Because we're putting them into a whole different space where we're wanting them to think about the business and apply their minds. Particularly for this strategic plan that we're trying to build. So it's very important that people feel comfortable and relaxed and are at, at, at ease because we're really asking them to focus and concentrate. And we're looking at making sure there's no interruption while they're trying to do this thinking, which is typically what happens if you have your strategic planning session in, in, in office is that a secretary comes through and calls someone out. We've got a quick, urgent call for you. And so they're disrupted in their thinking. There's no con continuity of thinking. So the environment, ideally, should break that paradigm and give them the freedom and opportunity to really think. Now, what that requires is a location that is easy to access, that has good, got good parking, that's got signage that shows people around, where the conference facilities have everything that you need with breakaway areas, where they have service surrounding that, providing you with um, 
uh, teas and coffees and, and having those things available when people want them. Because the, ultimately, what any destination should be trying to do is help organizations achieve the result. Important points to remember while contracting a ven venue. Whatever someone negotiated, whatever that is offered to or by someone or mutually agreed upon, including venue services, fees, items, costs, rules and restrictions, should be specified in a written format on a stamp paper duly signed by the parties who are entering into the contract and who are legally competent and authorized to enter into a contract. Decide the compensation in case event is forced to shut down or cancelled because of noise ordinance, venue staff strike, change in the management staff, change in the ownership of the venue, buyouts, bankruptcies or other guests housed by the venue who are not associated with our event. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Event planning is the process of planning a festival, ceremony, competition, party or convention. An objective is a goal and objectives should be smart, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic and time bound. An organization team is a group of individuals that supports the goals of the event and assists with its planning and execution. Talks are all the steps needed to plan the event like for example setting the agenda, finding a suitable value and so on. Logistic are all the details that make the event happen. 5 W's, that is why, what, when, where, who and 1 H, that is how principle is used to create an event plan.